This year we've had accidents with guns in the movies. I'm Jim Dunham. I am the president of the Wild West History Association and I am the director of special projects and the historian for the Booth Western Art Museum and that's where we are at the museum here in Cartersville, Georgia, one of the great uh, Western art museums in the United States and we encourage everybody to do two things. First of all, join the Wild West History Association and second of all, when you're in Georgia, come visit the Booth Western Art Museum. We're going to talk about the problems of accidents with firearms and specifically we're going to talk about why and how these things happen. Uh, the situation with the recent movie Rust was that they were in a rehearsal and during that rehearsal a gun was fired and the cinematographer was killed and the uh, director of the film was wounded. All we know for sure then is that a bullet was somehow in a gun that was considered to be a prop gun, although it's just in the prop department, it's a real gun, and that the gun went off. It would be presumptuous of us to start blaming people because the investigation is still going on right now and we don't know for sure how that bullet uh, came to be in the film uh, area or among the people that were there or what happened for sure. We'll learn down eventually uh, what happened. But needless to say, live ammunition does not belong on a movie set, and uh, something definitely was wrong. But let's talk about the kind of guns that were used in the movies, how they can go off, what will cause an accident, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the kinds of ammunition that are used both in film, in sporting events, in reenactor uh, shootouts. In 1873, Samuel Colt started producing a gun that became known as the Equalizer, the Peacemaker, and the gun that won the West. That's the gun that most of your cowboys used in the Old West, most of your gunfighters, people like Wyatt Earp and Bat Masterson and Wild Bill, actually not Wild Bill Hickok, he used the 1851 Navy. But a lot of the gunfighters of the Old West used the single action army. The, the first 8,000 of them went to the United States Army. Those guns were 45 caliber with seven and a half inch barrels. They were blued or black guns with wooden handles. And then they, could, they made a, what they call a five and a half inch barrel, which was called a, a uh, uh, artillery model. And then this one here, which is a uh, four and three quarter inch barrel, was called a civilian model. If you were willing to spend a little extra money, you could have it engraved. You could have nickel plates, you could have ivory grips made. So this would be the top of the line. A gun like this, uh, when it first came out into the market, would sell for about $20, which was pretty close to a month's salary for a working cowboy, so it wasn't cheap. This type of gun, this single action type of gun, the way that you, you handle a gun is like this. First of all, you never point it at anybody because you assume that a firearm is always loaded until you know. Whether it's going to be used for hunting, whether it's going to be used for sport, whether it's going to be used for entertainment. A gun is always considered a lethal weapon and you always have to remember that was what it was originally designed for. So you don't, you don't jump to conclusions and assume a gun's unloaded. You have to make sure. The way you make sure on a, on a Colt Peacemaker, you open the gate. Now there are three notches on the, on the hammer. The first notch, when you pull it back, just clicks slightly and that moves into a notch on the hammer where the trigger engages the hammer and moves the, ha the hammer slightly back. That's called a safety notch. It's okay, but except if you drop the gun, that notch is so fragile that that hammer, if the bullet is right there underneath it, if the gun has got six bullets in it, you drop it on the hammer, that gun will go off. And so many of the old cowboys would keep one empty chamber underneath the hammer. In other words, five beans in the pot, not all six. And that's what they did, is they moved uh, a, an empty chamber underneath it. The second notch is called a half cock notch, and that's your loading and unloading notch. In this particular case, the cylinder now is free running, runs by itself, free rolling, and you can look in the chamber and you can see whether or not the gun is loaded or not loaded. If you go like this and you've got six empty holes, you physically cannot fire the gun. That gun now will not go off. It is safe for that gun to be used and not worried about whether somebody gets shot because it, it's a safe gun. Now, pointing it at somebody now is a matter of politeness rather than safety. On the other hand, two things. First of all, 
you don't still want to point it at anybody. However, in the movie industry or in reenactments, for example, it might require, the script might require that you point. In the case of Rust, you had to, according to the script, this was a rehearsal, but the, the point of view was from the camera and therefore they wanted the actor to point directly at the camera and that's exactly what happened. Now, when it's free running like that, the last thing you want to do is pull the trigger. Because if you pull the trigger, either the trigger is going to break or the notch on the hammer is going to break and the gun will probably go off because if this thing has got the bullet in line with the barrel and the hammer falls, guess what? A gun goes off, but you don't want to go off half cocked. And the reason is because the gun, the bullet will probably exit from the side and you're going to blow up in your hand and maybe do damage to your hand as well. The shooting position is full cock, just like that. Full cock position. From full cock, it's just a slight touch and the gun goes off. So full cock position is exactly what you want. Almost all of your Hollywood mistakes or, Hollywood or, or movie mistakes or fast draw mistakes are made because of the improper way the gun is drawn from the holster. When the gun sits in the holster, 100% of the injuries that were made in the sport of fast draw were made because of improper grip. Because the way that you should have learned to handle a gun and draw it fast is not like this, but rather come in like this where your entire thumb fits into the notch wide like this. And that way, if you grab the gun like that and pull it out of the holster, guess what? Your index finger will go in front of the frame or in front of the guard because you can't pull the hammer back with your thumb like this and then also fit your finger in the guard. So in, in the right way to draw the gun for fast draw was to hit, lift, the forward thrust cocks the gun, and then your index finger pulls into the thing. So at what point can you shoot yourself? Not yet, not now, not yet, not now. Now you can, but the gun's not pointed at you. Now you can still shoot your television set. You can still do a lot of dumb, stupid, criminal things with the gun, but you physically can't shoot yourself with the gun. So here's what I think happened in the movies. All right. they, they said, the actor said that he did not pull the trigger. In a double action gun, the trigger is set into, a, into a, the middle part, and when you pull the trigger, you pull it all the way back, and that makes the hammer go back and then fall. And so the chances are, Nobody pulled the trigger. I think what happened was, is it came out of the holster like this, and then what happened is all they did was let the hammer fall, just pull the hammer like this off, and the hammer fell and went on. That was that, was that, that accidental char firing. Instead of putting it down like that by hand, it just went like that. In fact, that's how fanning works. In fanning, if you really want to, you can hold the trigger down and you can strike the hammer with the other hand. In fact, you can fire it one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. You can fire six times. The problem with that is the gun jumps around. And when the gun jumps around, it's hard to hit anything. So I think what happened in the, in the accident is that the gun was pulled back and the hammer came off. Once again, I wasn't there. And, and we weren't there. So we don't know for sure what happened, but if, if it makes sense that something like that probably happened, and therefore it was certainly an accident, but a very sad, tragic accident. By the way, there have been several shootout groups that have created live ammunition problems, where somebody came with a loaded gun, fired the loaded gun, and somebody got hurt. There was a case in, in 1976 in Estes Park, Colorado, in the reenactment group, the guy came, the guy the night before had been a security guard at, at a KOA campground, and he came with a loaded gun, not remembering that he hadn't unloaded it, and instead of loading blanks in the gun, he fired live ammo. It went into the ground, hit a rock, came out, ricocheted, hit, hit a lady in the, in the face. So that can, be, that can happen if you drop the, the safety rules. The same thing happened with, with, with a shootout group in Tombstone, Arizona. One of the shootout men came with a loaded gun, fired the gun, and one of their actors got shot. So what they did is they, is they would fire these blanks, and sometimes if you were too close to somebody, you could set their shirt on fire. Also, that wad would hold together and was quite dangerous. A few years ago, the best thing that ever happened to blank ammunition they are called plastic safety blanks. And this is your plastic 5-in-1, shaped just like the brass 5-in-1. And this is your uh, 45 Colt safety blank. The black ones are full load, they're louder, and the, and the uh, yellow ones are 
half loads. This has got a primer in the back. The primer sets fire to the gunpowder. The front end splits open like a tulip and, and, and the powder comes out in a puff of smoke and a flame and a loud noise. They use flash powder, which is the kind of powder that magicians use, and as a result, that flash powder burns very, very quickly, and as a result, these types of blanks do not produce any danger. Even 12 inches from the muzzle, it won't even tear a newspaper. So the danger, the only danger there is if you happen to have mud stuck in your barrel and it comes flying out like a projectile. There are two times in which somebody died in the past in making Western movies or television shows. In, uh, in the television series Alias Smith and Jones, one of the actors foolishly was playing Russian roulette. He didn't think that firing a blank doing Russian roulette was going to hurt him, and he used your, your five and one blank, which was popular at that time. He put one into the chamber of the gun, spun the cylinder, pointed it at his temple, at his head, fired it, <clears throat> and it drove that projectile, drove that wad into his brain and killed him. Uh, Peter Duell of, of the television series Alias Smith and Jones committed suicide, although he probably didn't want to commit suicide, and he's one of the times that somebody died making a Western movie. Not a Western, but the movie Cr The Crow uh, with Brandon uh, uh, Lee, he died making the movie, and that's really an unusual situation. Here's what a real bullet looks like. This is, this is an actual bullet. It has, it has a lead front, it has gunpowder, and it has a large pistol primer in the back. What happened in the movie Crow? The movie called for a weapon to be pointed right at the camera. Very much like in Rust, the same situation, pointed right at the camera. And because when you do that, you can see the open spaces in the cylinder. Here's a good example. Remember, we just checked this gun. We know it's not loaded. But if you look down the gun, you can see the empty cylinder holes down to the side of the barrel. The empty cylinder holes. So you can see that the gun's not loaded. All right. So what they did is they put dummy rounds in those cylinders so that they wouldn't fire, but it wouldn't, and it wouldn't be dangerous, but it would have the appearance of a bullet. Well, in the movie, The Crow, they didn't have union people working. They had a, a armorer who's ultimately responsible for the firearms, but that armorer was told he, they had to make some fake bullets, some, some uh, uh, bullets that looked like real bullets, but not real bullets. And what the armorer did is take some lead fronts and some shells and put some glue on the lead front and stuck it in there so that it would stay, loaded six of them into his gun, and then pointed it at the, at the camera. They shot it and they filmed it. And then the armorer took the gun back and, and emptied those bullets into the box for the props were kept. One by one, they fell out of the gun. One, two, three, four, five, six. One of the six looked like this. One of the six looked like that with no fled front. In other words, that should have been a warning right there that all of the bullets that looked like this didn't fall out of the gun. One of them looked like this, which meant that the front lead got loose, the glue didn't hold, and it came loose from the glue, slid into the barrel or was, let, was stuck in the cylinder, and the gun was put back in the box. A few days later, they needed the gun to be used for a blank to be fired at Brandon Lee. And without checking and clearing the gun, without looking in the barrel to see if there was nothing uh, that was blocking the barrel, the armor simply loaded blanks into the gun, handed the gun to the actor. The actor shot directly at Brandon Lee, and a bullet hit Brandon Lee and killed him. And so what it was was not a live round, but it was actually a lead front push fired by a blank, which the man was shot and killed. But the result was the same thing. And based on the same problem, and that's the assumption without checking that guns are unloaded. You should never, under any condition, ever assume a gun to be unloaded without checking. It is an absolute, it's, it's the single most important thing. Guns need to be respected. They are lethal weapons. But you can, if you properly use them, take away the dangers. I'm Jim Dunham, the Director of Special Projects at the Booth Western Art Museum and President of the Wild West History Association. You have a good day. Happy trails.